Fat Force Radio. Fat Force Radio is rated M for mature. Or should that be immature? All right, welcome back to episode three of the Grumps and Gramps uh, show presented by Fat Force Radio. We'd like to especially thank uh, our sponsors tonight who are Loom Cube. So if you are a toy photographer or, a, you know, a, a real photographer, um, Loom Cube are the essential tools for your photography. They make everything brighter, clearer, and just awesome. I've got a set. James has got a set. Yes, sir. Uh, and our guest tonight, I know he's going to be talking about his photography and stuff. And joining us tonight is our first guest on the Grumps and Gramps show. And we're very proud to have the stud of toy photography, Mr. Eric <laughs> Stutter. Thanks, guys. Welcome thank to you, the show. Thank you. Honored to be here, man. Uh, guys, oh, well, well. I'm excited about it. Yeah, we're honored to have you. We're, we're big fans of yours, so this is really cool for us. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Like, every time, you know, and I've been following you, Eric, for a number of years because, you know, when I when I look at your photos, I, I study them like, what is he doing? How does he do this stuff? And, yeah. you know, if you guys, and I'm sure most of our, you know, listeners and stuff know Eric's account, you know, it's at Eric Stuttered on Instagram. Just go and give him a follow and, and you'll see what we're talking about because, you know, he is by far one of my favorite toy photographers in the game. Somebody that I study, I, I look at your photos and I'm like, wow, this is a guy that puts some thought into it. And he's not just some yeah. amateur hack. He, he knows what he's doing. Um, I, one of one of my favorites as well. I always repost. I feel like I repost yeah. every one of his pictures. I'm like, oh god, this guy's gonna think I'm a stalker. I, I always appreciate it too. I yeah. always appreciate no, the shares. It's, it's, it's yeah. awesome to see people uh, putting it out there and enjoying it. And uh, I'm glad people, you know, are studying it. I guess you know, like just checking it out, trying to figure out what's going on because. I do the same with other people's photos as well. I kind of like, man, what did he do here? Mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. how long have you been collecting and what what got you started in just collecting action figures um so you know as a kid growing up in the 80s i had you know masters of the universe and uh all thundercats and all of those oh yeah all of those things you know so i was heavily into action figures growing up and then when the uh, Batman 89 movie came out, that's kind of like, I, I mean, I knew who Batman was and, you know, I, I was aware of who he was, but I always kind of, you know, you saw super, uh, super friends or superpowers. Oh yeah. And he was, you know, you, I just didn't think a whole lot of it, but then you see Michael Keaton's Batman, the dark Knight, And uh, that's kind of what like really drew me into Batman and kind of figuring out like, Oh, Holy cow, this guy's serious, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so so that kind of gave my love of Batman, and I collected Batman's figures and comics. And, uh, you know, as you get older, you get into other things, uh, high school girls, skateboarding. <laughs> so you, you kind of get out of it a little bit. But, you know, like I would pick up a figure here and there and or, you know, like find something from my childhood at like a thrift store or a, a vintage shop and pick an, oh, 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 an old Batman figure with no cape or, you know, got to have it. Uh just to put up on the shelf. And uh, I guess in 2015 is kind of like when, or late 2015, early 2016, is kind of when I got back heavily into collecting action figures and, and uh, finding out about Mezco and hot, mm -hmm. really finding out about Hot Toys and all these other toy companies that were making like just 
incredible figures, like totally blown away stuff from our childhood. Just yeah, just amazing. So that's kind have, of, I guess, yeah, where it went. Do you have a specific line or, or maker that you gravitate more towards? Um, I have a whole lot of Mezco. Uh, yeah. I picked up quite a few of those. Uh, I find the 112 scale kind of a little easier to photograph, especially having diodes and, and things yeah. like that. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's just, it, it's just a little easier for me. Uh, but you know, I do pick up the yeah, one six stuff from like hot toys and sideshow collectibles. And, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, because those figures are just, you know, they're masterpieces. I, yeah. I mean, so, the so six scale is uh, well. really cool. I mean, six scale is really cool, but like you can't have a dial in your house, or, <laughs> unless yeah, you, gets, you know you're gonna move out or something. <laughs> yeah, I see some uh, hot toys room. behind you right there. I see a uh, Nightmare Batman hot toy behind you. Oh yeah, I got those are the, the boxes, some of the boxes and stuff stacked yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> look so, at mine. Yeah. Look at the Mezco boxes. Yeah, I know. I got those hidden behind the door. And I mean, you know, <laughs> it's easily hidden by the door, but my wife comes in and she's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I totally connect with you guys or what you were saying on one of the previous episodes where it's like you get a figure in and your wife or girlfriend is like, what? When'd you get that? Oh, I've had that on pre-order for like a year. <laughs> you know, like, I mean... And then there, there's yeah. been times it's like, I want to get here when the FedEx guy, the UPS guy gets here so I can just take it to the back room and like just yes. push it to the side to hide it, you know? Like, yeah. I don't really want to explain it right now. <laughs> yeah. You, you're married to the fig life, not the fig yeah. wife. That's what I said. <laughs> That's right. So how, how would you describe your, your style of photography? Um, I mean, that's a tough one. I, I, I mean, I just try to like, like when I shoot, especially Batman, I try to be real gritty with it and try to capture that character. Uh, so I guess, my, I guess I kind of go to, more towards a gritty feel in my photos, a darker tone, uh, uh, just kind of, I guess, I don't want to say gothic, but uh, just kind of, you know, just kind of capture that grit of the streets and try to, and try to color balance like I would see in like movies and whatnot. So, that's what i was gonna say like in your photos i like the color you know there's a uh, yeah. great deal of color and and even with the mezco figures some somehow i don't know how you do it but you get the eyes to light up where it looks like they're lit up yeah i go in and do a lot of it, like a lot of touch up in photoshop to kind of help okay. brighten up the eyes uh, yeah. and i do my color balancing in photoshop to kind of help oh, okay. you know kind of get cool. the film quality uh, yeah, that that's been the key for me. Like start, you know, you start with like, like using your lighting. Lighting is everything in photography, and uh, like I use, of course, like like you guys mentioned earlier, loom cubes. Okay. Uh, so I have a few loom cubes and the gels, and uh, <laughs> that kind of helps introduce some some tension and some you know some yeah. different like tones, uh, warms and cools. That really helps to me. For me, like it helps my photos. I feel like pop. And then I like to use a lot of um, atmosphere aerosol. I don't know if you guys oh, okay. use any of that. I do, uh, but I don't know how to use yeah, it. Apparently, I mean, I, maybe it's because the air condition. I don't know. I spray it, but it just <laughs> doesn't seem to show up in my pictures. I don't know how to use it right. Is there a technique? Are you? It helps the back backlight with it. Uh huh. The backlighting really helps make it. It helps pronounce it a little more, in my in my opinion. Okay. Uh, so I usually try, like when I use, I usually try to have a light towards the back just to kind of catch it. And if you could have some colors coming in, like a red gel or a blue gel or uh, or, or some kind of like warming gels, those will help capture it too. That's one thing I like about your photos is that. You know, a lot of times the foreground is like a blue or a purple, and then you've got a red or a white or a yellow on the side that just kind of accents the outline of the, the figure. Especially like, um, you, you remember when we did the Leap Day Challenge? And you're, yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you for being one of the two people that did that. <laughs> but, you know, the way you, you had like um, 
from what I remember, you know, on Catwoman on the her right side was kind of like the, the building and the dark, but then you had like a purple or red or something, and it just, you know, formed, you know, her torso and her body, you know, and, and just made it pop out and add some depth uh, to the photo. And yeah. it, it's like, it, I look at your photo sometimes, especially that John Wick one, and I'm like, is yeah. this from the movie? That's what I was going to say. Because I, I yeah, hate that uh, goddamn figure, but I was like, wow, Eric made that look great. <laughs> yeah. You're the guy that has put me in so much damn credit card debt. Because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that looks great. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you know, get it at home and it doesn't look like the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, like a lot of people I know, like you, you mentioned the John Wick photo. A lot of people, when they got the figure, were like, oh, this is a terrible figure. Yeah. A lot of it, like, with the figure, it's that light, like, yeah. He's not the best figure, you know, like, you know, yeah. he could have been maybe painted a little better. He could art, art, a little better articulation, but I find like you can just get that lighting just right, you know, and capture <clears throat> just some accents. And uh, I mean, you have to stay away from like just full flooded light. You don't want that. You want shadows. You want you want things that it, things that are going to kind of create some tension in the photo, too. Um and yep. you mentioned like kind of making things pop, and that to me that's a lot of using like warm and cool colors together, like and like complementing them, and that kind of helps create that that depth and that three D look. So uh, Eric, are you self taught, or, or have you you know taken uh, classes? I actually I actually went to uh, college and got a degree in uh, fine arts with an emphasis in photography. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, so that that helps, uh, yeah. but. Um, I I didn't do a whole lot of studio work, you know. In in college, it was more like just cityscapes, landscapes, things like that. Gotcha. And uh, towards towards the end, I kind of got into some like more like gritty, like uh, like dressing people up, not necessarily like as superheroes, but um, just trying some alternative techniques with like Polaroid transfers and things like <laughs> that. So that's kind of. So I cut my teeth, I guess, in college and kind of, you know, played around with photography there. And then after I graduated, I, I said I kind of, you know, I ended up not even doing photography for, for quite quite a long time. And uh, just kind of, you know, had a, an office job for a little while and then uh, got back, kind of got back into photography more with toy photography. Yeah. Right. Cool. Awesome. So, um, what's some of the equipment that you use? Like, what kind of camera um, do you have and, and lights? And Yeah, so, I have <clears throat> a, uh, a Nikon uh, D800. Okay. Uh, it's a full frame. Uh, I believe I have, like, a, I typically use, like, a, um, I think it's a 24 to 85 millimeter. And it has, like, a macro setting on it, so I can kind of get in close. That's one thing that, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to find me one of those lenses because um, I really love when you get up close, especially yeah. like those hot toys. It's just like, man, yeah. that looks the, so real. The cute and, cute and pixels. Yeah. It's, yes. So that, that helps a lot, too, because, you know, you can really make that depth, change your depth of field and uh, kind of really like blur out your backgrounds and kind of just help that helps too with that that i guess making objects pop and stand out yeah. from the background um okay. i use uh mainly to light things i use loom cubes uh i have uh three i have three loom cubes right now and i use various things too with those like the gels and like their different attachments yes to help like spot light kind of like with a snoop um and then uh i have like a smaller like i don't use it too often but like a little white panel here okay it, it, it can it can warm and cool that's about all and you can dim it and whatnot so i use that some uh and sometimes i actually use my telephone too to kind of just i'll i have like uh, some color screens on my my telephone my iphone and i can kind of go in close with it while i'm shooting just to kind of maybe get like a 
highlight of blue. I don't want it like too overpowering or uh, a highlight of like a, a red or purple or whatnot. So that kind of helps. That actually cool. used to be my primary light source for a while. <laughs> I mean, because like you said, I can, I can just do a search for, you know, aqua blue and find an right. image and then just, you know, set your phone to where it doesn't shut off. And then you just kind of hand hold it and yeah. get the light and angle you want. And, you know, I was doing that for a long time. Um, you know, I'd have my other lights and stuff, but they were, they sucked, but then I, I actually got a set of loom cubes, and I mean, it's just made mine, my photos a lot clearer. Um, yeah. The lighting, you're right. Lighting is everything in these photos, especially when you're trying to make plastic things look. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, having like more than one source of light, you know, various backlighting, you know, maybe like some side lighting to catch that rim, some rim lighting, just mixing it up but you know like it's a lot of like for me trial and error like i'll set up shoot something and i'll, I'll look at it and like oh that light oh it's i don't like where this light source is coming from i think maybe i need to cool this this light source down or and, and, and warm this one up on the other side you know it's just you know trial and error just trying to yeah. figure out like you know what looks the best and then so what's the average length of like a if you uh, of a shot and do you go in with a preconceived idea or you just kind of just do whatever um, it varies um there are times when i hey i have an idea come in it goes pretty smooth and then it's like all right i have an idea i'm going to try to pose this figure and the pose <laughs> isn't looking right i can't get uh, not enough articulation and yeah so you know you start I, and i'll walk away maybe and come back the next day and just say you know what Maybe if I move my camera and I just kind of move, you know, like do something a little different. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, just try to find something that works. So it varies as, as far as like how long, you know, how much time I put into it. Um, sometimes, you know, I can get a shot real quick and then I can get it in Photoshop and do the edits I need to do and, you know, have something with, you know, in, in an hour. But then there's other times where it's like it, over over a couple hours um yeah so man it, like i said it varies yeah I, i'm i am not a good photographer you know i, I use a nikon d3400 you know good beginner level camera and um uh, got a couple of lenses i'm more familiar with like the 35 millimeter lens than the 15 to 50 but um I am not a good photographer, and it takes me a good while to get something where I feel like it. I'm satisfied. Yeah. Right. And um, I I see people do the do their photography in in different ways, and I'm always trying to learn. I love when people do the behind the scenes shots, and I see like when people have like like you know for example yours you know the dark. The, gritty tone but then they take the photo in like almost room lighting and you know I, i've kind of learned where i can adjust some of the exposure and temperature and stuff like that but do you like to do most of your photos in like room lighting like this or do you actually turn the lights off and use your own lighting to set oh yeah so yeah i turned like the overhead light off and okay. you know go dark and get my loom cube set up so yeah i I, I, it's too warm. It's too overhead, like especially yeah. in this room. So, yeah, I, I pretty much just use my my uh, st or uh, my studio lights or my loom cube lights. Okay. Uh, for <clears throat> photos, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm trying to work on that myself. I have the, the set that you have, Gramps. I have that coming. Uh, oh yeah. Cube. Yeah. So. Now, you have a pretty extensive diorama that your figures live in can you talk a little bit about that yeah so um i uh met up with uh i don't i don't even remember exactly how i found them but uh i think it was on instagram oilers underscore workshop yeah and uh he was making like you know like props and stuff so i, I got some props off of them and uh like you know like a 
one twelfth scale, like trash bin and some barrels and things. And I'd been, you know, I've been wanting like an alleyway. And um, I, I, I spoke to a couple other guys I found on Instagram and asked them about building stuff. And let's just say it didn't work out, you know. And so, you know, I went, you know, I just reached out to uh, Oilers Workshop and I was kind of like, hey, man, this is kind of what I have in mind. I know you put a lot of detail, like, in the stuff I've seen you build. Um, would you be down to do it? And, you know, kind of give me an estimate and kind of go from there. And, uh, yeah, he was down. And, man, he just he blew it out of the water. It's and he it's kept so adding good. stuff. He was like, I'm going to do this. Are you okay <laughs> with that? And I'm like, yeah, just do what you have to do. Take your time. I'm not in a rush. I just want it to be awesome. So, and yeah. He definitely delivered. And, uh it's it's incredible yeah. he's an that artist helps. having a dio like that helps yeah man i mean he is an artist like i look at his stuff because i've tried to make some dioramas and you know it's basically a brick wall and <laughs> you know an inside of a a, a building nothing elaborate <clears throat> i look at his shit and i'm like man he's got metal walkways a cargo ramp yeah. uh bay door you know it's just like holy crap and then the extents of the extent of you know he paints it so it looks weathered and deteriorated and really looks like the grime of a gotham city or a new york city and i was just like how long did it take him to do this <clears throat> a long time yeah. He put a lot of work into it. Like he would send me updates, and he's like, "What do you think?" I'm like, "I'll keep going." He's like, "Oh." Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I didn't rush him. I didn't rush him. I was like, "Man, you're the artist. I've learned. Do not rush an artist when he's making a, a masterpiece. Yeah. So keep yeah. going." And uh, it it turned out to it, he made he made it huge. And you know, it started off small, and he just said. I got this idea and I want to try this and I'm like, go for it. And uh, it turned out to be massive and uh, it had to be delivered by freight. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It was cheaper Holy. to send it by freight, by a freight truck than UPS or anything like that. That's how massive it is. Where does it so, live? <laughs> it lives in my room. It's actually right over here off oh, camera. Okay. <laughs> is it collapsible? It's on, like, or? Yeah, it's all like held together with magnets, magnets so it's yeah. segmented so you can take it apart, and, you know, store it if you have to. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I have two like folding, like large uh, folding tables put together, and it lives on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's that's awesome. <clears throat> yeah, that's it's, awesome. It's pretty cool. And I've Do already you... got a request in for something else with them too. I'm like, I have another idea. So, uh, okay. Oh. Yeah, expanding your, <laughs> expanding your, the stuttered universe. <laughs> so, um, got a question. What do you think, okay, what figures do you, are coming out that you are really interested in? And then, like, what have you got your eye on? And then what has come out this year that you think should be nominated for fig of the year? Let's see. So some of the stuff I'm, I'm waiting on, uh, of course, the Michael Keaton Batman from Mezco, the 89. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I've been patiently waiting on that. Uh, so I'm excited about that. I can't wait to get it. I'm actually uh, I'm not a huge Superman fan, but I did order the uh, the uh, Mezco Christopher Reeves. OK. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that to kind of have like a Michael Keaton. Batman and Christopher Reeves. Mm -hmm. Super That's going to make some really cool picks. Yeah. So I'm excited for both of those. Um, I have, I'm actually excited to get the uh, it's a, the Hot Toys Mandalorian figure in. Mm. Okay. So I've been waiting on that. Uh, had that one on pre-order for a little while. So, uh, But right now, as far as figure of the year, oh, man, that's tough. Um, I really like the Supreme Knight. I got him right here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Figure of the year. That's tough. 
Cobra Trooper. Can, can I wait until I get the Michael Keaton Batman? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get back to us. <laughs> yeah. That's that's going to be an interesting one. That's a, what, Seamless Body or something? Seamless uh, Body. Yeah. Suit. yeah. yeah something, something like that. Seamless Suit, yeah. Well, and there's also, what is it, the the figure arts version coming out at almost the same time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I ordered that one, too. Pretty sure. Well, okay. Something about the face on that one just didn't look right. I, I would have to wait until it actually comes out. Because, you know, sometimes these promo pictures aren't the best. And then yeah. you get yeah. the figure in hand or someone does a review and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to buy that now. Um, yeah. And I've had, I've ordered like, uh, pretty sure I ordered the Hush, the uh, Mayfax one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't received it yet. I ordered it through a big bad toy store. I haven't, I have to double check. I, I, I was kind of surprised I haven't gotten it yet. See, mm. everybody. Now you know they, they always take a bad. while. <laughs> yeah. Big bad toy stores always uh, last. <laughs> they are a little behind usually on yeah. getting things shipped out. Uh, I think I also have some of the Dark Knight. Returns figures through them yeah. too. So the uh, the black suit one is coming out soon. Yeah, yeah. I've I've already so. seen some pictures on Instagram of yeah. him. He, he looks really yeah. great. But. So you tend to collect more in kind of like you know the the higher collectors figures versus you know the cheapy Marvel Legends or you know your McFarlands yeah. the twenty eight dollar range. Um. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I have a. Uh, I definitely have more, you know, like Mezcos and, and, and Hot Toys than anything else. Right. But I, I'll tell you what, I've been getting some of the uh, the uh, McFarland stuff lately, and I, I've been really pleased with it. You know, for $20, uh, the uh, Batman Who Laughs, that was awesome. Oh, that's oh, right. Uh, the White Knight figures, Curse of the White Knight, uh, all, they're looking great. They look great. Um, yeah. I'm, so I've been, I'm excited. I'm, I'm seeing, like, these... Uh, the pre-orders coming out, like the Grim Knight. I'm, I'm really interested in getting that one, and uh, some of those Robins. Yeah, too. yeah. It, it, uh, you know, it hasn't even been a year, and they've progressively gotten better with each each series. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm 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 impressed with them. You know, for the price point and everything, I I think they're doing a great yeah. job. Excellent job. Yeah, and. You know they, you know when we talked to Todd on on the Bat Force Radio podcast, he he kind of dropped some hints that you know they were looking to do stuff out of the box that you know we may not been ready for, and he he's really surprised us, you know, especially with the the White Knight and the Curse of the White Knight line. We you know because sometimes these comic stories you won't see a line of figures for them for years, but I mean yeah. it's just like. Within a year, we've got almost you know every major character out of that story. Um, yeah, that Azrael bat from Curse of the White Knight is going to be awesome. Yeah, he looks great. Yeah, he does look. He looks do you really have good. Do you have the Curse of the White Knight Azrael, the red one? Yes. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's my nominee for figure of the year, based That's on what I was just say, yeah. just based on the sculpt the. The value for what it cost, and you know, it, it's just a very dynamic figure. And I know that there's higher price and higher quality of figures out there, but I mean, for the value, man, that thing—it's hard to beat. Yeah, yeah that's pretty good. Like, it's great figure. Even some of the you know Marvel Legends uh, reviewers were you know really gushing over that Azrael. Yeah. Erica, I wanted to tell you in person, well, as per, as close as we can get. Um, <laughs> you did this one photo where it was like battle damage Mezco Batman in an alley with the Reaper chasing after oh, him. Yeah. Dude. Oh yeah. That's one of my favorite photos because I love the Reaper from year two, and I was just like, yeah. Okay, I and that's, I mean, you were already on my radar, but I was like, man, this guy, oh my gosh. I gotta, I gotta learn how to be like this guy because he's so good. <laughs> that that photo, man, it's one of my favorites. I I love it. Yeah, um, I had to get the figure because you know I I, I read the series and I loved I, you know like he is like an underrated villain and 
I wish we could see more of them in comics. Uh, but yeah, I had to, I had to try to figure some way out to get them into to a shot and kind of going after Batman to kind of recreate that, you know, that pivotal scene in the alleyway where he kind yeah, of yeah. face off for that first time. Yeah, it'd be cool if we got like a Reaper Year One type of story, um, where he's a young man and loses yeah. his wife and turns into Reaper and all that. That'd be cool. Um, do you have any like quick tips or you know advice for people that are wanting to get into or improve their toy photography? Yeah, um, I guess vests and lighting. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the message you had, uh, you know, um, and just, you know, look at other people's stuff, kind of ask questions, like reach out to people. Like most everybody in the toy photography community is just super chill and easy yeah. to yeah. talk to. And they're all, you know, they're they're very helpful. And, you know, hey, what do you use? What equipment do you use? Uh, what do you recommend? Uh, so, and just, the more photos, the more practice and time you put into it, the, be- the better you'll get at it, you know, right. like anything, really. We will. We have a, a small little announcement and kind of a, I, I guess it's a surprise. Um, <laughs> you know, this episode is sponsored by Loom Cube, and, you know, you know for a fact the quality of, you know, the lighting that Loom Cube brings. I do, too, because I use a you know, pretty much the same set you do, but um, we have nominated you as the very first recipient of a Loom Cube uh, set that's going to come to you direct from Loom Cube uh, with our partnership with Batforce. So, you know, congratulations. We're going to get your Man. information and we're going to get that sent to you. Well, guys, that's 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 awesome, guys. Um, I really appreciate it. Man, that's, sure. That's pretty. That's that's a great surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, we're we're huge fans of yours, so yes, you know, we appreciate you coming on the show with us. I'm happy to do it. When I saw you guys doing the uh, the YouTube channel and everything, I, I listened to the first one and like yeah. it's it's great that you guys are getting into figures and kind of <laughs> talking about it. I know on the actual Bat Force Radio, it gets into more comics and right. Yeah. You, know, you don't get to kind of delve into the figure side of of the hobby so it's yeah i think you guys are doing an awesome thing and keep it up and i was i was glad to be here man I, I, yeah. all fun. right well thank you very much and uh that's about all the time we have for this episode so again follow eric stuttered on instagram and you know go go like his photos the guy is amazing and as you saw awesome super guy and you'll definitely learn something if you look at his photography and thank you very much i'm gramps he's grumps peace out take it easy guys thanks for having me